Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of star-crossed lovers in love that love reacting to some StarCraft too. And we're feeling a little purple today. We are feeling a little purple today. So, you know, I get, we're Team Kerrigan, all right? So we're, we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we got the purple. It was, yeah. yeah, I mean, we should have wore this for Heart of the Swarm. If we were thinking ahead of time, we would have wore this for Heart of the Swarm. But then we didn't know how that was going to end, so we couldn't have done that. Th there you go. Um, this is Legacy of the Void. This is part one. This is the first half of Legacy of the Void. It's actually part four of our journey, of our StarCraft journey. If you want to see all of our StarCraft journey and our, all of our StarCraft reactions, we got a playlist down below in the description of this video. It's super convenient for you. You know, you should go ahead and check that out if this is the first time you're checking out one of our videos. But it's probably not. You're, you're a regular, aren't you? All right, come join us on this journey. Well, continue this journey, really. Yeah, continue this journey. There you go. That's the way to say it. Humans thought they were alone in the Caprudu sector. They were wrong. The Zerg emerged, seeking to consume all in their path. And before long, the Protoss, a highly advanced alien race, began wiping out infested worlds, burning Zerg and Terran alike. A three-way war, unlike anything humanity had ever faced, erupted almost overnight. All the while, a human civil war raged. Marshal Jim Raynor vowed to oppose the corrupt dictator Arcturus Minx for the betrayal of the woman he loved, Sarah Kerrigan. Ah, uh, boys. How about that you back? Damn you, Arcturus. Yep. Don't do this. It's done. Helmsman, signal the fleet to be out of orbit. Now. Kerrigan. A loyal operative was left to die at the hands of the Zerg. But the Zerg had other plans. They transformed her and unleashed her psionic power upon the Caprudu sector, searching for their real objective, the Protoss homeworld of Ire. The Protoss were unaware of this danger and slow to respond. Their rulers, the Conclave, had dispatched Executor Artanis to hunt for Tassadar, a commander who had refused to wipe out infested Terran worlds. They crossed paths with a dark Templar mystic, whose kind was considered heretics by the Conclave. Through great effort, Zeratul convinced Tassadar and Artanis that he was not their enemy. Together, they rallied the Protoss from both factions against the Zerg. Despite the Conclave's fury, they achieved significant victories against the Swarm. But when Zeratul struck down one of the Overmind Cerebrates, his own mind was left vulnerable. From his thoughts, the Overmind gleaned Ayr's true location, and the Swarm descended upon the Protoss homeworld with all their might and fury. It was Tassadar who kept the Templar from extinction that day. Using the power of both the Templar and the Dark Templar, he sacrificed himself to kill the Overmind. Ayr was lost, but Artanis led the survivors to the Dark Templar's homeworld of Shakuras. All prejudices were set aside. The Templar were now in the Dark Templar's debt. Why can they bring in the Without Templars? The I just think of Assassin's Creed. Mm. Kerrigan sought control of all the Zerg, even enlisting the aid of old friends and enemies like Raynor, Manx, and Zeratul. Once her rule was uncontested, the Queen of Blades betrayed them all. <laughs> Billions of humans and Protoss were killed. The Zerg stood unchallenged, but to the relief of all, the war seemed to end there. Zeratul suspected the Zerg had fallen under the control of dark forces. He uncovered prophecies stating that an ancient entity, Amon, was attempting to merge Protoss and Zerg lifeforms into an unholy hybrid. That's the guy Kerrigan's going after. This evil might already have control of Kerrigan and her power. It was during this time that Executor Artanis, hailed as a hero, was made leader of both the Templar and the Dark Templar. As Hierarch, Artanis united both factions and promised to one day reclaim the glory they had lost on Ayr. Good for you. Raynor had vowed to see Kerrigan dead, but his retaliatory strike failed. Even his rebellion against Manx's tyranny proved ineffective against the Dominion's propaganda machine. 
But with the arrival of old friends oh, and the wings serious wings. new allies, Raynor revived his campaign against the Dominion, scoring major victories on multiple fronts. But Zeratul warned him about the approaching darkness and said the key to stopping Amon was the Queen of Blades. She was needed alive. In a daring raid on the Zerg homeworld of Char, armies from the Dominion and Raynor, with help from Arcturus' son Valerian, used an ancient Zelnaga artifact to neutralize Kerrigan's power and free her from Amon's grasp. The Queen of Blades was helpless. The Dominion wanted her dead. Rainer couldn't allow it. Okay, now I know why she's going after Amon, because it was both Manx and Amon that like had kind of taken her life from her. Valerian Manx offered them sanctuary, but his father could not let this opportunity pass. During the raid, Kerrigan and Rainer were separated. Kerrigan escaped, while Rainer Executed. Kerrigan sought vengeance. She set out to reclaim her position as Queen of Blades. With Zeratul's guidance, Kerrigan gathered the Zerg broods and ruled the swarm once again, only this time free. The killing will never stop until Minx is dead. Kerrigan began dismantling the Dominion's military one mission at a time. To her surprise, she learned that Rainer was still alive. She charted a course to Korhal, Manx's stronghold. Despite encountering his best troops and traps, she personally ended his life. Hmm. But there was little time to celebrate. Amon's plans were still unfolding. Kerrigan left Rainer to rebuild while she hunted her true enemy. Rainer and Valerian Manx set about reforming the Dominion. With a just See, government. They can get back together. With the Zerg and Terrans quelled, Hierarch Artanis saw an opportunity. He declared that the unified Protoss, Templar and Dark Templar alike, would retain Hyre. Any dissenting voices went unheard amid the hope for reclamation. Zeratul set off alone, searching for the truth, hoping against hope that the Hierarch was not making a terrible mistake. Good setup. And that was Legacy of the Void. So. <laughs> the swarm brought ruin to our world. Our proud people became refugees. And yet, they could not shatter. Our unity. For we are bound by the color. The, the sacred union of our every thought and emotion.
They're all angry. He's ready though. Too many people with A's. Hmm. <laughs> They're big into the A. Turrets. I have now 
found a way to stand against the coming darkness. You must believe me. Come on, Tears. We have been through much together, Zeratul. But far too many have sacrificed in the hopes that this moment would come to pass. Executor! Commence the invasion! I mean, he heard him out, and that's more than a lot of people uh, would do. But at the same time, it's just, what does that matter if you never listen? Well said. Thanks. It's from White Man Can't Jump. You hear me, but you're listening. Words of wisdom from yes. White Man Can't Jump. Yes, exactly. It seems the end war you warned of has begun. Tell me, old friend, what is it you have learned? I have witnessed the end of all things. Horrific legions are hybrid, raising world upon world. In the darkness, lording over them a shadowy form. Amon. Yes. You spoke of a way to stand against him. This vision was a benevolent one, as if an ancient voice called out from beyond. The Keystone shall usher you unto hope. Keystone? I saw a burst of light revealing the Zelnaga artifact on the Terran world of Korol. It is the Keystone of this vision. The prophecies speak of Zelnaga standing against Amon in the end times. I believe this keystone will guide us to them. I have always trusted you, Zeratul, but the burdens of leadership demanded much of me. There are times when I am uncertain whether I was truly ready for such weight. Your doubt is unfounded, young Artanis. You must embrace what you have become if you are to be the leader we now need. You will go to James Raynor on Court Hall and receive this keystone. I will marshal our forces for the war ahead. When you return, the Templar will be ready. Entaro Tassadar, old friend. And Taro or Tannis, brother. I got Tannis as leader. I mean, you know, he, he he seems like he has humility. And he admits that, you know, he, he had doubt in himself. And that's like, as a leader, just admit that to somebody. That's pretty huge. You must trust their to I can hear his whispers. Fight your Tannis. Do not let him more consume you. Hatred. He has corrupted the Kala. Your nerve cords came to his will. They must be removed. Show up. Now's the time. My life for iron. Come on, Sector, we got survivors. Oh. 
别接的，一卡嘞
invasion. Yeah. Protoss vessel. This is Commander James Rayner. Our test. There. Ain't you a sight for sore eyes? Friend Rayner, you seem rather occupied. <laughs> Just another day at the office. Who are these insurgents? Call themselves Mobius Corps. An elite guard that used to work for Dr. Narud. They've been striking worlds throughout the sector, leaving few survivors. Each world attacked reported hybridly. Then truly, no world is beyond Awan's reach. Yeah. Reinforce those bulkheads. Reposition the Mark 7 Alpha. We need to form a battle line. They've overrun Sky Shield, our orbital defense platform. Looks like they've destroyed its atmospheric stabilizers. It's falling fast. If it crashes, it'll obliterate August Grand. We will ensure that does not happen, Commander. Engage their fleet and keep their assault at bay. Like old times, buddy. Like old times. Yeah, Raider! He's such a cowboy. I know, I love it. That's a hell of a thing your boys did, Artanis. Sky Shield is back online. We're about to call down the cavalry. We will join you on the surface and extract the keystone. I got some bad news for you. <laughs> it seems our friends below had the same idea. While we were fighting to get planet side, the Imperial Palace was raided. Security data indicates the keystone was taken. My mama used to have a saying, when it rains, of course. it floods. I am uncertain as to how this saying is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Me either. Wait a minute. That's great. Intel. A Mobius Corps evac team is headed toward Bennett Port. They got the keystone. We shall not let them escape. Yeah, I love that they're teamed up. Where's Kerrigan? She's gotta come. I mean, yeah, she's gotta, she's just gonna make it eventually. It's gonna be a grand That's a fancy door. Also very secure. It's like three doors. A preserver? Released from stasis. Starcraft is in the good doors. She still her nerve cords. She's tethered to the collar. Hold. I am Rohana, Grand Preserver of the Valari, and your War Council Advisor. You must be the Executor in Command. You are not possessed by the Dark One. How is this possible? I feel darkness lingering at the edges of my every thought, but I am not corrupted. Preservers Ow. of my station have trained to control who calls every ripple. I assure you, I will stave off this evil and serve you better by doing so. As all preservers, I hold the memories and personalities of Protoss prior to my submission to Stasis. This will allow me to contrast your tactical decisions with those of past executors. From this chamber, you will be able to make all military allocations. I am Artanis, Hierarch of the Daylaw. I lead all that is left of our civilization. Your memories are indeed of use, Rohana. But make no mistake, if you fall to this corruption, I will not you. hesitate to destroy you. It is understood. I am prepared for the Firstborn's darkest hour. Come, let me show you what may be done here. Artan basically said, I'm gonna cut a bitch if you turn on me. I must remind you, our sacred law, the Daewoo, clearly else. forbids us to interfere with lesser beings. Ooh. Unless you talk to Jim Rayner? a direct threat to the Empire. Your choice to aid these Terrans is perplexing. Why do you assume that they are lesser beings, Rohana? I do not make an assumption. Gaze upon them. Unsophisticated. Primitive. They communicate through orifices. Mouths. Many, including myself, once thought as you do. But I have seen their nobility. In time, you will also. And he listened to Freebird, and it was a fucking awesome song. It's so. looking bad, Artanis. A lot of dead people down there. We gotta take these bastards out. What could have led these Terrans to come under Amon's thrall? 
They were assigned to some top secret details, running security at Dr. Naroon's hybrid research labs. After Valerian re-established the government, the Mobius Foundation went dark. Last transmissions were chaotic, crazed. Next thing we know, the attack started. The Naaman has turned them into his slaves, an army. They are dangerous, but they are only the start of the war to come. You always were the optimistic sort. <laughs> Why not? That's it. Okay. <laughs> Should have known the one on the ground had a receding hairline. That would yeah. be our herbal essences guy. That was the best scene so far.
It. It has passed, Hierarch. Pain is gone. He's gonna come back, then. Do you see now why you must separate from the Kala? Its light has faded. I will keep him at bay. No. I will endure. I have felt his rage, seen his truth. If you will not sever your connection to the Kala, then you will be contained, kept in stasis. I will preserve the Kala however I must. If I must endure imprisonment, so be it. Okay. Sticking to your guns. Respect. Respect your determination. Yeah, exactly. The and her fight. Matrix yeah, spicy. Truly an impressive sight. A synthetic star. Imagine what went into its creation. This chamber provides power to the spear of a doom in all its systems. Its radiance even contributes nourishment for our warriors. How long until you can bring its tactical systems online? The system analysis has begun, but the star is laying dormant for an eon. It will take time and a powerful ignition catalyst like Solarite to restore it to full capacity. Solarite? The Firstborn haven't utilized Solarite in millennia. This vessel is ancient, Hierarch. We will need to exhaust even unconventional resources if we are to bring it to bear. Do what you can, Faye Smith. We will acquire what you need. Very well. You may begin augmenting the solar core whenever you are ready. to Commander Raynor. Hey, you got it, Skippy. Skippy? <laughs> you got it, Skippy? It's like Queen Elizabeth or something. <laughs> no. Hierarch. Shakuris is overrun. Loss of life is extensive. Hold. We are receiving a transmission. Praise the gods. Artanis, you live. Matriarch Vorazun, what has happened here? Shakuras has fallen. The warp gate linking this world to Ire has been reopened. Countless hybrid and Zerg pour from the other side. They've obliterated our cities, decimated our Shadow Guard. We are trying to evacuate the remaining population, but I am uncertain whether we can hold long enough to get them safely away. I will give you the time you need, Matriarch. My Templar are inbound. Despite this tragedy, I am pleased to see you once more, Hierarch. I had hoped that our next interaction would be your announcement of Ayer's reclamation. As did I. Instead, the Templar have fallen. Then the threat is greater than I realized. We cannot let the same fate befall Shakuras. It is too late for that. Amon Zerg poured through the warp gates a tide of flesh and blade. They have already overrun Telemetros and are nearing the shrines of Mazul. This world is lost. With such an infestation, Shakuras must be destroyed. Destroy Shakuras? I will not permit this. Permit? Shakuras was my people's home long before we offered your sanctuary upon it. I will not let this world be a den for Amon's forces. Worlds may fall to ash. What matters is that we endure. To lose Shakuras and Ayo. 
We are a vagabond people, Artanis. Our true home has always been Iron. Let us reclaim it together. It is fitting that the daughter of Rajagal decides the fate of the world she helped forge. Rajagal? Let us make preparations at once. I guarantee you. Yeah. Rajagal, Razagul. Tell me, Vorazun, how will we bring destruction to your world? The Zelnaka Temple's phase prism can be overloaded, forcing a spike of energy into the planet's core. Enough of a charge, and the planet will shatter. Amon will not possess my world. You've thought about this a lot. I have been thinking about this choice. Are you reconsidering? No. My time here has reminded me of the courage of your people. That we must fight. If we are to suffer, then so too will Amon. We will lure as many of Amon's hybrid and Zerg through the gateway as we can. Only once enough are through to wound him, will we overload the temple and flee. You mean to bleed him? Bold, but we can't risk the forces it would require to do such a thing. Leave that to me, Matriarch. I have learned much from the Dark Templar. Hmm. Blows up. Nice charge. Is gone. It has become one with the eternal night. But the traditions we forged there will remain with us forever. Is that still possible, Matriarch? More so than you may realize. What do you know of the Shadow Walk? As guard as a people? Little. Your people closely guard their customs. It is our most sacred rite of passage. The Initiate stands alone. Members of her tribe strike against her from the shadows. If she endures, she becomes a shadow hunter, true Dark Templar. Why do you speak of this? You stood alone as Dark Templar against countless enemies, risking your life for the many. You have walked as we have. You have walked the shadow path already, Artanis. You no longer have the Kala. You are Dark Templar. Hmm. She just knighted you. Mm-hmm. Delicious cool. facility. She intrigues me. Yeah. Within it lies the greatest weaponry the Empire ever developed. 
It is the site of the Purifier Revival Program. Purifiers? The Forbidden Weapon? They were sealed away by the Conclave, never to be restored. The ancient purifiers are not kept here, Preserver. They are still locked away. Here, on Glacius, our researchers have been developing prototype weaponry inspired by that ancient technology. You speak above your caste, Kalai. This is unimaginable heresy. We are outmatched by Amon's forces and facing annihilation. If this technology may help us, we will use it. May I put your foot down? Mm -hmm. That's never a good argument. You're speaking above your class or whatever? Yeah. Whatever. The Taldarim. Here. They are attacking the facility. Amon has unleashed his servants. Ready our warriors. Yeah, kicks my ass. Smith. Artanus, it is good to see you, young executor. Phoenix, how... how can this be? It was his cloned personality that was used for the purifier prototype. Given your friendship with the source personality, I thought, well, he believes he was brought from stasis and made a dragoon. I was given a directive by Octarus himself to come to Glacius and serve the Templar. It is the last recollection from his memory web. The Great Templar were still encoded by order of the Conclave. Do you know about the experimentation done on Glacius? Why Aldaris gave you this order? I am a warrior, old friend. You know this as well as any. It is not my place to question the order of adjudicator. This construction Sounds like a weird Darth Vader. Advanced, and a demon shell composed of a trillic compression mesh. It appears he was to be the first in a revival of the ancient program. Enough! I have fought far too long for the wheel of the Conclave to be examined like some specimen. I am Templar, and I am reunited with the dearest of friends. Are we sure it's not Vader's voice? <laughs> you are right, of course. Carax, these tests are no longer needed. Phoenix, welcome aboard the Spear of a Dune. You and I have stood shoulder to shoulder. Blades thrumming in the heat of battle countless times, and now you lead the Protoss. I will with pride at the mere thought of it. I was chosen to represent the hierarchy by the remaining Judicators and the clans of the Nerezim. I am still honored by their choice. Tassadar must be proud as well. Tassadar is gone, Phoenix. He fell. Bravely sacrificing for his people. He saved us from annihilation. What? It... it cannot be. And... I... fallen to the Zerg as well? It has. How long have I lingered in stasis, becoming this... Dragoon? Do you know of the Purifier program, Phoenix? Of course, the greatest Templar minds replicated dangerous machines that had to be shut down. They were shut down, but we have never ceased the research and still have tried to find ways to replicate our greatest Templar to use that ancient technology. Why do you tell me this? I... I... We are facing a war like none we have seen before. We will need you in the days ahead. Maybe even the purifiers. Then my blades are yours, old friend. Okay. That's what we needed to hear. Seeing Phoenix once more perplexes me. I feel sadness 
and I should feel joy. It is said the warrior Phoenix was felled by the Queen of Glades. This approximation is not Phoenix, but he is a reminder of the loss you suffered. His voice, thoughts, his very presence. He describes memories we shared with such vivid recollection. Every instinct I have tells me that this is my friend. But all logic defies it. We, of the Nerazim, often ponder whether our people are the sum total of their experiences, or are more than them. A truth lingering inside us. In time, we shall see if this phoenix has his own truth, or is little more than a flaw of forgery. of the Zelnaga now. Their understanding that energy, essence, and information are all one. Each interchangeable, each mutable. Then you uncovered the information Zeratul foresaw within this keystone. I have. From what I understand, it will lead us to Ulnar. Ulnar. It is a place of myth. A realm whispered of in our legends. The home world of the Selnaga. I believe the Keystone can project its location. Show me, Karax. Does not have one of those pillars from Agents of Shield. It does. And I was also thinking the the fifth element mm, when they when yeah, they put it on the little little yeah. things. It was like they they put a little dust on it and they put blow the fire on, on it. it. Yeah, yeah. They blow on it. Yep, totally does. Yep. Must be in error. The Altarian Rift. That is impossible. Nothing could survive within such unrelenting forces. It appears I have failed you, Hierarch. I do not believe so, Karax. It is said that the Zelnaga came from a place where no life should be. This aligns with Zeratul's prophecies. We will go in. Make preparations at once. Nothing gets survive there. It's like, by now, shouldn't you expect the unexpected and, like, you know, just to be anything's possible? I mean, come on. Yeah. You have a woman leading a bunch of bugs. A friend's personality is implemented onto some suit of armor. Yeah. Like, nothing's happening. Going off the devil's anus. against Amon. They could end the war. My people could be free once again. Then why have the Zelnaga not answered us? I am going into the Alnar Temple alone, Matriarch. I do not intend to risk any more lives. You risk your own life on the word of a traitor. He killed your mother, Vorazun. That is true. But he was never a traitor. I do not wish for death. Only to see Zeratul's visions fulfilled. Yeah, but I can see why she doesn't no, trust that dude. That yeah. Much, I believe. Funny, he's using it like a flashlight.
the devil. I've got dragon wings and whatnot. She still has a good one. I see now. The Zelnaga were the first. Born within the void. Their sacred purpose was to cultivate life and perpetuate the infinite cycle. At a new universe's creation, they take a physical form. If destroyed, they are thrust back into the void. All of this time, they have waited for us to assemble the Keystone hmm. and find our way here. It was here, from Almar, that the Zelnaga began to seed the universe with life. They created us, just as they gave life to a numberless assembly of races in other universes. Every time, they observe and identify the potential of their offspring. Never interfering. The infinite cycle will always be the same. Two races are destined to emerge. One, pure of essence. An indomitable spirit capable of great change. And one, pure of form. A being capable of vast psionic potential. Able to house the essence of a Zelnaga. Ahead of us. Within the Chamber of Ascension, the Zelnaga have slumbered as civilizations grew, fell, and formed again. They will awaken when the two destined races arrive. Then, the elders among them will give their lives to bestow their essence. And pure of form and pure of essence will be reborn as Zelnaga. Shepherds of the infinite cycle. Is that all they intend? They don't ask for much, do they? Mm -mm. Something's not right here.
Quite a cliffhanger to stop at. Yes. Um, but you know, so we're gonna do part. Uh, this is part four, so we're gonna do part five of our journey uh, next week. But you know, so the legacy of the void is, is a lot. There's a lot yeah. to take in here, so we gotta digest it. You know, a, a, a little bit at a time. So what do you think? I mean, I really enjoyed it. There, there were like a lot of things that went through my mind. So at the at the very end, when he's going up against Avon and Avon's doing his whole big "I am a crazy villain" speech, mm -hmm. all I could think is like. Man, we need like some Bruce Willis diehard kind of thing. <laughs> like, man, shut the hell up. <laughs> like, here you are professing how you're this great dark lord, whatever. Just like, let's let's get to the kick ass part. Yeah. But we stopped right before right right as that was about to happen. Parallels to like Lord of the Rings, because it felt like, you know, he was like the dark eye. Uh, when he was up there and then all of a sudden when our Artanius like allows himself to kind of get possessed a little bit, it made me think of when, and I think it was Pippin, he picks up like that scene stone. And yeah, Pippin Pippin picks up the scene stone. Okay, so yeah. it was Pippin. Uh, he picks up the scene stone and so like all of a sudden he gets to see inside Sauron's yeah. head. And to me, I was like, that's- Fool of a took. Exactly. Um, it made me think of like, you know, when you said Kerrigan get in there and I thought, no, but like, this is an opportunity. You know, it's, mm. it's not like a happy opportunity, I'm sure. Our, Artanis. Artanis is not enjoying this experience very much. He didn't become possessed, he overcame it, and I thought, what a great opportunity to kind of get inside his head and, and have that. I think also, uh, you know, Blizzard's got a, got a, got a hard on for A names, you know. Uh, <laughs> Artanis, uh, Arthas from uh, World of Warcraft, um, Amon, and uh, Manx had a, had a name, what was Manx's name? Um, Ar Ar I was gonna say Arturus. No, it's not. It's not. See, there's, there's but, too many A names. But it is something. It's A something Minx. Too many A's. Pick another fucking letter, Blizzard. All right, that out of the way. Um, <laughs> let's spend the next half hour talking about Kerrigan's butt. Okay, so it's a really good butt. That was the last. I was surprised by kind of like how invested I had become in Zeratul. Um, yeah. The fact that I mean, you know, he like like he, he had shown up. Throughout the way, like you know, in each in each of the little, kind of little uh, movies that we've seen so far, and it just kind of like you know took for granted that he was you know he's going to be there the, the the entire time for the entire journey, and no, he he kind of had served his purpose and he had talked to each one of the main characters in each of the stories and set them on their path. What I like about it is each one of these characters is is, is very distinct. And is likable for for very different re reasons. I think Artanis is, is a very great leader. Jim Rayner is great because he's the human of the story, and it's kind of like the guy that we, you know, as a, as a guy, all all kind of kind of want to be the guy that you know that can pull off saying "darling" to, to to somebody, and always has the great lines to say, and uh, is a badass, but at the same time, you know, has a, has a softer side. You know, when he's talking about the fact of. The people, the, the kids that were that were dying, and uh, he's like, I already know their, know their story. You know, never thought that this would happen. And of course, you know, you, you sign up for uh, for Battle for War, and you know, you know it's a possibility, but you don't go into it thinking that that's ever gonna gonna happen. Yeah, that so, was a really powerful scene. Yeah, that was that was probably the best scene in this uh, in this so far. Um, in Legacy of the Void, I should say, so far. Wings of Liberty was easier to follow, even though it didn't have a, a, a ton of the in-game stuff. For us to kind of piece the stories together, like it was just easier to follow. And then Heart of the Swarm, um, maybe I wasn't as attached to the characters as much because, like, you know, I'm just not attached to Zerg. I just don't, you know, relate to Zerg as much as I do to humans, I guess. Um, but the Kerrigan was still there, so there was still that kind of her whole journey and her whole like wanting to hold on her to her to her humanity while still wanting to get revenge, which you know, love a good revenge story. Um, still sticking with the Western theme and that and that kind of whole thing. Um, this one has a lot more uh, going on as far as like the bigger picture of it all. Um, so it's just a lot more uh, yeah, 
dense. I think for every Artanius, you need a James Rayner. Mm -hmm. um, the two of them complement each other so well, so it makes it very enjoyable to follow both their stories in this particular part of, of this journey. Um, Artanius is a good leader. He cares a lot. He yeah. takes himself seriously. He has gravitas and he has wisdom and maturity and sophistication. And he's not willing to sacrifice uh, like where Kerrigan was just like in, in the last one you said that yeah. she was sending all the she's like oh just send all the all, all the Zerg down there some are gonna make it through it's fine he's like no I'm not gonna willing to sacrifice other people I'm gonna go on this mission by myself you know because I've learned all these all these tricks like you know I can survive this the mark of a good leader is someone that will never ask something of someone that they themselves are not willing to do and I think that's a great lesson for any, if you're in any kind of leader, leadership position, not just, you know, like, you know, in, in, in war or whatever. End of but the world scenarios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any kind of, any kind of position. And, you know, that, I think, sort of builds respect within, with, with, within everyone that you're, that you're trying to, you know, to, to lead. And the fact that saying, like, okay, this, they're not just asking me this because they don't want to do it. Because they're lazy. Because they, you know, because they're scared. Because they're a coward. No, he's not a coward. He's not scared. He's willing to go in there and sacrifice himself. Sorry. No, no, that was fine. <laughs> What's great about James Rayner is he doesn't take himself seriously. Not to say that he mm. makes light of war, the end of the world. He no. very much cares about his soldiers, and, and he's not... Yeah. He's not an airhead. I mean, he's not he's not a moron, and he's not heartless. But he's going to be, like, the Bruce Willis diehard kind of guy that I wanted to, like, you know, take it to Amon. Yeah. Um, he's going to go in there with the one-liner. He's going to bring levity. You need that because that's what life... Those are the best moments of life. The moments when you laugh. The moments when you let your guard down. The moments when you stop taking everything so seriously. Stop taking yourself so seriously. Yeah. Stop worrying about being cool or looking good. But you just have a real human moment. And someone like James Rayner brings that out. I agree. I think uh, Rayner, Rayner's best uh, quality is the fact of his um, being able to be himself and live life through these tough times and through war, what are you fighting for? And I think Rainer always kind of has that in his mind of what he's fighting for, you know, whether he's fighting for Kerrigan, you know, whether he's fighting for love, whether he's fighting for, you know, he, he's fighting for a, a, a way of life. And um, he keeps that kind of with him throughout the whole time. And that's, that's really cool. Um, he's not waiting to win the war to live that kind exact. of life. He's going to live it every day. That's it. That's it. That's 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 a great way to say it. I also really am interested in the matriarch character, um, who was at Artanius' side. I thought, okay. I thought she was very intriguing, and I would like to learn more about her. I, I saw enough to get me curious about more of her backstory, where she comes from, and yeah, um, you know, the Dark Templar, and and, and all yeah. She's this. like, now you're a Dark Templar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, now you're a bad boy. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm I am curious about her and the. Um, is it the Nazim? Was that what they... Na I keep thinking, hearing Nazgul because I, I come with Lord of the Rings. I, I don't quite remember. I want to say it was the Nazim, but now I'm second guessing that, so I'm not sure if that's accurate. But I am curious about her, her people, what her backstory was and everything before this particular moment because, I mean, she comes up there and she seems very willing to do what needs to be done in, in, a, in a very strong way that yeah. could not have been an easy choice. On top of which, she is now at the right hand of Artanius, which is a, a pretty sweet spot to be sitting in. And I don't think you get that position lightly, so I'm I'm curious about her. Really excited for the next part. Um, you know, we got someone to latch onto with Artanis, and also uh, now we got Kerrigan showed up. Kerrigan. Yeah, and so you know, uh, hopefully the next second half is going to be like you know the two of them teaming up. We got to get Jim in there as well. I, I'm, I'm really curious about, about how this is all gonna gonna wrap up. Um, they got a good, good ultimate ultimate villain that is trying to also be some sort of altruistic. Like I am just trying to, you know. I think we talked about this before with uh, in World of Warcraft, like about like breaking the wheel or whatever. We kind of try to brought back to like Game of Thrones. And you're just like, oh, I'm gonna end all this suffering and I'm gonna end all this cycle of by of mind pain. control. Yeah, yeah, by by controlling everyone's mind and everything like that. No, 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 no. Anyone that. Anyone Who's like I'm gonna fix the world by taking away your free will. Probably not someone worth yeah, following. Yeah. Just just submit and, and 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 I will make the world a better place. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's no, like no. when Loki flies in and has everybody bow down, and there's that guy yeah. who's like, 
I don't bow. It's like, <laughs> yep, that was good. Like that's, I'm like, oh, I want to be that, that little old man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got part five coming next week. It's Legacy of the Void, uh, the second half of this. So hope you join us for that one. And like I said before, we have a playlist down below in the description of this video of yes. all of our StarCraft uh, you know, journey and our, and our reactions for that. We have a bunch of playlists, so if you like any one of our uh, franchises, go ahead and, and check out for the playlist. We probably have one for a bunch of different reactions for those uh, that series. So thanks so much for checking out our reaction for part four of StarCraft II Journey, um, Legacy of the Void. Just keep in mind. Our reaction is definitely not definitive.